Welcome back. In our previous video, I gave you an overview of Wacom Embroidery Studio 2025. We looked at the user interface and we looked at where the tools were. Well, now we're gonna dive a little bit deeper and look at how some of those tools work. And in particular, in this video, we're gonna focus on opening, printing, and exporting your embroidery designs. Now, everything we do revolves around embroidery designs. We make embroidery designs, we stitch them out on our machine, and that's how we make our money. So understanding the basics of embroidery design, and in particular, the difference between a rich embroidery object and a stitch file is really important. So let's start off with opening an embroidery design in your Wacom Embroidery Studio. Now there are a number of ways you can open an embroidery design in Wacom Embroidery Studio. The first way is of course, simply go up to the open icon or go to file, open design. From here, you can select the embroidery design you want to open, such as this embroidery design here. Now this is a rich Wilcom embroidery file. It's a Wilcom.emb file. I can see that by opening up my color object list and I can see all the original embroidery objects that I created, including objects that I also grouped as well. It means when I select them, I can use any of my tools to rotate or reshape or modify that design because it's an original embroidery file. Now, at this point in time, it's probably a good time to really talk about the difference between a Wacom.emb and a stitch file. Now, let's use the analogy of a, um, a graphic designer, a, a print designer, or design for your, for your website. You'd build a design usually in a vector package like Corel Draw. Now, in Corel Draw, they're rich shapes and objects. So when you type lettering on screen, you can select that lettering and you can, you can resize it, you can recolor it, and you can modify it. And you build your, your logo or your design for your website in a rich vector format. Only when you want to put that design on your website do you export that rich vector design to a bitmap like a PNG, JPEG, or heaven forbid, a good old fashioned BMP. But imagine if you had to make a change to that logo, like the text was too small or the colors weren't quite right. And all you had was that exported JPEG, PNG or BMP. That's just pixels. It's not rich objects that you can modify. So it'll be really difficult for you to go in and change the size of the lettering or change the color of that artwork if you're only dealing with pixels. That's where you go back to that original vector file and you open that up in Corel Draw or Adobe Illustrator or whatever software you use. And you modify those vectors. You pick up that text and you resize it. You do any recoloring that you want to do. And it's only when you want to get it back on your website do you then export it to that bitmap or PNG or, or JPEG. But you always save that vector file for later use. Well, it's exactly the same with embroidery. When you build an embroidery design in Wacom Embroidery Studio, you save that as a .emb file. That is your original, rescalable, editable embroidery file that is basically vectors filled with stitches. You only export it to a stitch file when you're ready to stitch it out on your machine, just like you do with a JPEG for your website. You don't need to really keep that stitch file unless you want it for quick access for future stitching, but any changes that you need to do, you go back to that Wacom.emb embroidery file. But the world's not perfect. We don't always get access to a .emb file, and sometimes you might outsource your design work to a digitizer, and all they give you is a stitch file, like a Tajima TBF, for example. Well, there's also a trick in Wacom Embroidery Studio to help you open up those type of embroidery files. So let's first of all, close off this EMB file that I've created. And we'll say no. And we'll go back to open. And this time, instead of a Wacom all-in-one embroidery design, let's open up a Tajima TBF file. Now, a Tajima TBF file is a stitch file designed for a Tajima embroidery machine. It's a bit of a step up from the good old fashioned Tajima DST um, because it does store colors, meaning the design looks like it should. When you often open up a, a DST file, it's missing all the colors because DSTs don't store thread colors in the file format. 
A TBF does, so it's a bit of a step up, but it is still a stitch file. And when you open a stitch file, first of all, it, um, it might look like the original design, but look on the right here. It's pretty much missing most objects. It's just a bunch of stitches. It's just stitch data. Now, if I zoom in and try to reshape that with my reshape tool and click on the object, I've got stitches. It's really difficult to reshape. I can grab some stitches and I can pull them out, but I've just done it to those five individual stitches. So it's gonna make it really hard to make any changes to that design. And more so if I select that whole entire design and then resize that, it's currently 27,118 stitches. If I make it larger, it should add more stitches, but it's now only 27,119 stitches. Because they're, they're just stitches, they just grew larger. There's more space. There's no additional density. It's not going to sew as well because I've just increased the gap between each of those stitches. But with Wilcom Embroidery Studio, there's a bit of a trick. If I close back that stitch file and I go back to open and I select that stitch file, before I click open, I'm going to click options. And under the open options dialog box, I have this option here called objects outlines. Now what this does, this uses a Wilcom technology to try to automatically recognize different stitch types and object types in this stitch file. It goes through your entire design and tries to find a pattern that resembles like a tatami stitch. And if it finds that pattern, it makes that object be a editable tatami object. Likewise for satin and run stitch and jagged edge and other settings as well. It will go through and automatically recognize those shapes and do its best to turn it into an editable object. So now with that turned on, I click OK. And now I click open. Straight away, you'll notice a bit of a difference. On the right side, we don't just have manual stitches. We have some objects that have been generated, including the stitch type next to that object. So now if I click on an object, which once was just stitches, and I use my reshape tool, I can now edit that. Almost as if I made that design myself. Now it won't be perfect, it is still a stitch file, but it's far more editable than just those plain individual stitches that we saw earlier without that outline and object recognition turned on. So that's two ways you're opening embroidery design. Now, don't forget, every time you make a change to that file, so I've made a change to this stitch file, I've increased the border size, I've dragged it out, I don't wanna just save it as a TBF again. I want to go File, Save As, and I wanna make sure it's set to Wilcom allinone.emb, and I can give it a version two if I want, but I'm saving that original embroidery file because it's that vector object. It's that easily editable file with maintaining all the colors, maintaining all the stitch types, all the settings you need, and only export it to a stitch file when you're ready to run it on your machine. Now, there are a few other ways that you can browse and open embroidery files. Uh, one way to see more than one design at a time is with the design library tool. And that's this icon here. Design Library is a built-in design explorer in Embroidery Studio. It allows you to browse any drive on your computer and preview those embroidery designs. Now, you might have lots of folders with lots of designs, and it's really, really tiresome to jump between different folders to try to find a design. Well, the way Design Library works is if you have a top or parent folder selected, it will automatically preview all the designs in every folder beneath that folder. And they're all highlighted black. They're dark and black to indicate, or bold, to indicate that you're previewing every design in every single one of these folders. So even though I've only got one folder selected, it's showing all 498 designs in every single subfolder. If I click down to samples, it's now only showing 61 designs in the samples folder. 
If I click on business, it's now only showing the 18 designs in the business folder. So it's really easy for you to browse through, look at all your designs or dig deeper. And when you want to open the design, just double click on it. And it opens straight into your Embroidery Studio software. So now that we've looked at opening a design, let's look at the print options that are available in Embroidery Studio. Now in Embroidery Studio, you can print off a whole stack of different sheets depending on what you need it for. There's your standard production worksheet. There's your production overview that shows all the different colorways of your design. You can print off a color film to show each block of color or thread being shown on at the time for your machinist. And you can even generate a customer approval sheet that you can email or even if you're good old fashioned fax, you can send that straight over to your customer. Now let's walk through each one of those production worksheets and show you how you access them in Embroidery Studio. So first of all, let's open up a design. And then we'll go up to the top and we'll click on the print preview icon. Now by default, it's turned on the production worksheet, which is the classic print uh, file or print worksheet that comes out of Wukong Embroidery Studio. Now on this worksheet is a stack of information to help your machinist perform this job on the machine. Um, now, first of all, there's actually a barcode, which if you do have a barcode scanner, you can grab that and you can scan that directly on your machine and send that straight to your machine via a barcode if your machine supports that. But there's also a stack of other information which is useful for your production manager or your machinist. So there's a number of stitches that are in the design, the height and size, how many colors and what colorway this is designed for. Because you might sew this design on maybe three or four different color garments and each color garment has a different color sequence which we'll touch on in just a moment. Down on the right side, we can see that this is designed for a Tajima machine. It has some recommendations on the topping and backing, the tearaway that you need to use uh, to uh, sew that design out. It's got information such as whether it's got applique, stitches, how much thread and bobbin, and then finally the stop sequence for that design. Now this is a three color design, but it has four color changes. So it has, first of all, the color change number, and then it has the needle number, the color, the stitches, the code of thread, and the name of the thread. So in my design example, the first color is needle number two, and it has this murky green 35 color. Color number two is needle three, which is the pale yellow 42 thread. Then it goes back color number three to needle number two to repeat the murky green 35. And then finally, color number four is needle number one, which is the brick red color code number six. So that's the sequence of the colors. And it might repeat, it might go back and forth like we talked about in that previous video when we talked about the, the color palette area on the bottom of your software. Now, again, there are other type of worksheets which are useful as well. And you can access them by clicking on the options. Then you can check which production worksheet you want to have. We can turn on the approval sheet, the production summary, and the color film. Now the approval sheet is a very simple reduced design sheet that you can send to your customer. You can save it as a PDF or you can email it directly to them as a PDF from inside Embroidery Studio, but it contains the basic information they need to see for the design. They can see what it looks like. If you had a photo of it on the garment, it would show a preview of it down here as well. What product it's going on, the quantity, and you can put in some terms and conditions if you have any, and an area for them to sign it and send it back to you. The next worksheet is your production worksheet, which we just talked about earlier, that is more designed for the machine operator to sew that design on the product. The next is a color film. This takes your design and breaks it up into the stitchable color segments for the machine. So the operator can see that the first color, it will sew this part of the design. The second color is this part, then the third and the fourth. And the final worksheet is what we call the production summary. Now this will show not only the summary of the design, but also the colors of the design for each garment you're stitching it on. Now some designs can have more than one colorway. 
And a colorway is when you have a sequence of colors that are different for the type of garment or color garment you're doing on. So for a white garment, these colors might be perfectly fine, but for a navy garment, they might want the colors to match that kind of blue shade of the garment. Well, if there are more than one colorway in your design, you can also preview them on this production worksheet by going up to Options, select the production summary, then under Colorways, it'll either be the current one, or you can select which one you want to show, or you could show all of the colorways. And when I click OK, it will update that. And if we click through to that production summary, we can now see that we've got not just one, but we've now got two different colorways. We have the color sequence for a white garment and a color sequence for a navy garment. Once you've configured all your production worksheets and you're ready to print, just simply hit the print button and it'll send it out to your printer. Or again, you can export that to a PDF or even email that as a PDF as well. So now let's talk a little bit about exporting an embroidery design. Now, exporting an embroidery design is very different to what it was when Wilcom first started making software in 1980. Back then, designs were exported out on things like this paper tapes. Of course, it moves a floppy disk and other methods, but still to this day, I know people that can look at this paper tape, read these punched holes, and know exactly what it's doing at this part of the design. But luckily, we don't have to deal with paper tapes anymore. Now we can send designs directly to the embroidery machine by again, scanning a barcode on your production worksheet if your machine supports it. Of course, another common way is to export it out on a good old fashioned USB stick. Or if your machine doesn't have built-in Wi-Fi, you could use the Wilcom Embroidery Connect device and you can wirelessly send your design directly to that embroidery machine. But in the end, what you require to do all of that is an embroidery stitch file. Now I mentioned earlier that you should always keep that Wilcom EMB file. That's your original editable file. You never get rid of that. You only export to a stitch file when you're ready to send that to an embroidery machine. And this is how you do that. To export this design to a stitch file for my embroidery machine, you either select the export icon on the toolbar or you go to file, export machine file. In the export machine file dialog box, you then select which file format you want to export your design for. Whether it's for Tajima, Baradon, Happy, ZSK or Toyota, it really doesn't matter. Select the file format that you need then press save. Now in Wilcom Embroidery Studio 2025, we now have an export docker, which is this icon here. This will show you a history of all the designs you've exported for your embroidery machines. In our next video, we'll explore a little deeper into the capabilities of Wilcom Embroidery Studio 2025.